Hey golf people, on today's episode, I've got the ultimate Costco golf set. We've got the Callaway Edge set, the Kirkland Signature Wedges, the KS1 Putter, the Glove, the Balls, everything. We're gonna put it to the test here today in nine holes. We have an over under of plus two. Plus two or better is a win, and we will see if Costco can live up to the task. Let's do it. So it took me a few trips to Costco to put the ultimate Costco set together. Let me take you through this bag. Let's start with the star of the show here. The Edge set from Callaway. This is $499 and what's included is a driver at 10 and a half degrees, a three wood, a five hybrid, six through sand wedge, and an Odyssey putter that's not gonna be played today and I'll tell you why here in just a second. Then you've got for $159, the Kirkland Signature Wedges. This comes in a 52, 56, and 60 configuration. These things, I think, are just as good as a Vokey with a couple of caveats I'll tell you throughout the round here. And then we've got what might be the star of the show here. For $139, you've got a milled putter. This is called the KS1. It comes with these weights installed and you can buy a weight kit separately for this online. And this thing, I know I've gotten a lot of hate for this, but I think it's just as good as any Scotty Cameron I've ever played with. And I've played with quite a few since the early days. So this entire set can be had for less than $800, but will it perform? How are these clubs going to work in conjunction with each other? Let's go find out on course. All right, first tee here as I'm walking up is a par five, probably my best chance at birdie, just a tad under 500 yards today. We've got the wind behind us, just need to get the drive in play. All right, that thing felt really good for my first swing of the day. In fact, it was my first driver swing as well. I didn't have a chance on the range to even warm up. But we're just off the fairway here. I've got my five hybrid here, which I'm going to see if we can get close to the green, close enough that I can put a wedge in my hands, hopefully get us up and down for a birdie. That's the plan. Let's see if we can execute. Uh oh. All right, I pulled that shot pretty badly. I hit the tree, but it ended up right in the middle of the fairway. So. We've got about an eight iron in here. Let's see if we can knock it tight. It's not tight, but we're on the green. I love the way these things feel. They are so easy to hit. All right, we've got about 20 feet here, exactly pin high. I love the distance on these clubs. Let's see if we can make a putt with the KS1. Woo! All right, we got a par. Oh man, I just had to hit that putt. I had it right on line. This putter is very easy to get putts on line with, by the way. The only problem there was it's a little dewy in the morning here. I'm not sure that green got cut yet either. And I came up just a little bit short, but hey, solid par other than that five hybrid. That's the one club in the bag here that I'm a little, hmm. Everything else is pretty money. The driver, three wood, all the irons and the wedges, which I love, but uh, that five hybrid, it's got this very tinny sound to it. It's the one club I don't absolutely love. All right, so number two here is my second easiest chance at birdie on this entire nine. The first two holes are pretty easy here. Then it gets very difficult through like the eighth hole. So this is usually where I've got to score, okay? And you've got to do that in golf. You've got to take advantage of the opportunities when they come. And not every hole is a birdie hole. You have to think about it that way. If you're gonna play good golf, you gotta think about the holes you can score on, you can get aggressive on, and the ones you've gotta play a little more safely. This one, I'm getting aggressive. Let's do it, guys. Oh, yes. Go, baby. Now we've got one problem here today, <laughs> and you're not gonna believe what it is, being that I'm kind of the golf technology guy, and usually I have four rangefinders in my bag, watches, everything. The only rangefinder I have in my bag today is actually out of battery power. It's my rangefinder, I haven't changed the battery in three years, so believe it or not, I have to go off eye today. We've gotta to go to playbetter.com where I get all my golf technology, and we've gotta get something new here. If you guys need a rangefinder, a GPS watch, some sort of cart GPS, go to playbetter.com. Great guys, there's a 60 day no hassle return policy and they're just fantastic folks. Luckily I'm standing right at 100, so we should be okay. Pins in the back, I'm gonna play this like a 110 shot. And I've got my new Kirkland wedge here, the 52 degree. Love these wedges because to me they're very similar to a Vokey. Let's see if we can make it work. Gotta go a little bit. 
Ah, a little short. I'm used to playing a 50. This is a 52, so it was right on track. I just gotta get used to these distances. Now here's when we could either putt or chip. I'm gonna go ahead and use the 52 degree wedge again and actually chip this one up there. Roll out, roll out, roll out. Oh, okay, I got a long putt here. We're gonna see what the KS1 can do. Oh, oh man. Oh, gotta say, that's a disappointing bogey, guys. I was in perfect position after the drive, really couldn't have been any better. Just a bad club selection there. That's where I'm just not used to the wedge distances and uh, that comes with time. But uh, I'll tell you what, the putter, the putter feels really good and I get it online every single time with this putter. Those two I just left a tad short. We'll get it guys, we'll get it. By the way, let's take a minute just to talk about this Kirkland Signature Ball. This ball is really good. For a dollar a ball is what it turns out to be because you can get a 24 pack for like $24. A dollar a ball, this ball is as pretty much as good as it gets for a dollar a ball. All right, it's just a tad shorter, I would say, than a Pro V1 with a little bit more spin. Okay, and I actually like a little bit more spin and be able to work a few wedge shots in there with a little bit more action with a wedge, all right? But very good ball. A lot of people have said, oh, Kirkland balls don't hold up over time. Well, I've found them to hold up just as well as pretty much any other ball. There was an older version of this ball, and that's where you have to be a little bit careful. This is the 2.0. The version before this did have some wearability issues, but this new generation of Kirkland balls I find to be very durable. All right, I wanted to be one under by this point, but instead I'm stepping up to the third tee, one over, unfortunately. We've got a very tight hole. It's gonna take two really good shots to get close. This driver is so good. This edge driver, it's set at 10.5 degrees in a package set, a package set driver. I'm driving the ball really well. It's not quite as long as my Sim 2, that's for sure. It's probably 15 yards shorter than that, but it is straight. We found one of these in-between distances here. I'm 170 to the pin. I can really try to hit the six iron, or I can try to use this hybrid, which seems to be about a 190 club. I can take a little bit off, maybe choke down on it. I think I'm gonna try to hit the six iron and see if we can get there. The pin is in the front. Worst case, we're chipping up. I guess I don't mind that. Long, there's a two-tiered green here. I don't think that's the right option. So my miss here will be short, just not short right where there's a bunker. Oh, it's good looking shot. Will it get there? I think I'm on the fringe. I'm just off the green, I think. One thing I really appreciate about these clubs is just how easy these edge clubs are to hit. I mean, if you're a beginner or a high handicapper, I can't imagine there's clubs that are much easier to hit, honestly. You've got the big Berthas, you've got, you know, some other options out there, which we will explore. And in fact, I will be doing a battle with these clubs versus another beginner set. The best one you can find off Amazon. We're gonna battle those two off really soon here. But in terms of how easy these clubs are to hit, it doesn't get a lot more easy than these. They stay really straight. One thing, maybe you can't work them right and left as much. I tried to play more of a fade there and it was pretty straight, but all in all, I mean, they just fly right up in the air, get very high very quickly. And uh, for the price, it's very, very hard to beat. I don't think they can be beat, but we will try. All right, here we are walking up on the ball. You can see I didn't want to be right in that bunker. <laughs> I'm just off the green here in the fringe. And uh, we're gonna go 60 degree here. Hopefully land it nice and soft. <laughs> I'll tell you what guys, these things are legit and I don't care what anyone says. The Kirkland Signature Wedges are as good as anything on the market. Oh man, guys. Oh, that felt good. We are back to even. These wedges, of all the value in the Kirkland Signature range, I think the wedges are where it's at. $50 per wedge is basically what these things work out to be. And the wedges that I normally play, my SM8 Vokies, are just a bit more at $150 a wedge, so three times as expensive and I don't think the results are three times as good, to be honest with you. Now, <laughs> here's the thing about it, right? Everything's got a good and a bad. 
The thing about it is they come in a 52, a 56, and a 60, and that's all you get. There's no other options. There's no other grind choices, nothing else to customize. But again, for a beginner, imagine you're a beginner and you're putting in a premium wedge in your bag. The value is absolutely there, okay, for $50. That was one of the hardest holes on the course. I might have birdied that hole once or maybe twice since I've been a member at this club. That felt really good to put one in the hole there. And it looked good all the way. Par four here, we've got the second in this really hard stretch of holes. Got to hit a really good drive. And then we're going to have a second shot that's tough into kind of a semi-island green. At least there's a lot of waste area and things off to the left that you want to avoid. So wish me luck. Oh no, it's left. <laughs> we got trouble now. And I'm not sure I'm going to find this. We're over here near some out of bounds even in some people's yards. There we go. We've got a way out here. The hole is up here <laughs> and I could actually go at it, but I think the safe play is back out here, guys. What do you think? What would you do here? I usually go for minimizing mistakes rather than compounding errors. But here is one case where I've actually got just enough club, I think, to get there and maybe just enough height to get up over that tree. But I think the safe play is out to the left. I think that's what I'm going to do. Sometimes you just got to take your medicine. So I've got 110, but I've got to carry the hazard here. So long is better than short. We're going to see if we can get there with the pitching wedge. Woo! It's a good shot. So there you go, guys. Sometimes it's just better to take your medicine. Now, the one thing is I didn't get it to the fairway, and I was a little worried about that lie. But what's nice about these clubs, even though they have a big profile, is even out of the rough, you can see they get right up in the air. Now I've actually got a chance to save par. This would be a great par if we do. I'm pretty much pin high. I've got, looks like 10 feet or so. Let's see if the KS1 can come alive. We're not gonna leave this one short. Maybe that's even better. That's looking more like seven feet actually. Pretty good shot there. Talk about being pin high. Oh, we didn't leave it short. Oh, I had a good chance at it. That was the line I wanted and that's what I like about this putter is it goes on the line I want. It's got a nice satisfying black line there behind you. You can really aim that putt. I have hit all these putts so far this morning online, at least where I wanted them to be. And uh, they haven't dropped yet, but they eventually will. That's just how golf is. Very happy with the KS1. You can actually buy a weight kit for this putter separately online. I wanna say it's $39 for the weight kit. Either way, extremely good value, but the way this is set up right now, I'm totally fine with. Out of the box, it works. All right, now we're stepping up to the par three here. This is gonna play about 175. Now that's exactly the spot in my bag again, where I've got a little bit of a gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choke down on this five hybrid a little bit. I'm gonna try to cut one in there or fade one in there. The reason I play a cut shot on these circumstances, when I wanna hit it just a little less yardage, that's the shot for me. The draw is a more powerful shot for everyone where you got that overspin. This is gonna give you some more backspin, get the ball a little higher. It's gonna cut down on distance just a tad. Let's see if we can make it work. All right, distance was right. I just did not get it to actually fade. So there again, you do see a little negative in the clubs for me at least as more of a lower handicap person, I guess mid to low is at least where I am at, at five. Basically, you're just not gonna be able to work the ball quite as much. I took a, what I thought was a fade swing there and it just stayed straight. Here we are in the fringe, couple yards short, but pretty good distance. I could putt this or I could chip this. I think as well as I just chipped it last time, that's gotta be the play, right guys? Now you can see the profile of this putter. It's nice and thick. Like this, this area right here, that's nice and thick. For me, it's not, obviously not nearly a mallet, but it's more mallet-like for this type of answer style putter, okay? It's just a little thicker here. And that gives me a lot of confidence as I come through the ball. Now you might've seen those wedges check up right there as well. And the balls, there's some good spin around the greens with these things, that combo is very nice. All right, that's why we wanted to test the ultimate set here. 
I wanted to see how all of the elements work together as one, and we're getting a pretty good taste of that right now. Now, by the way, this glove, I absolutely love this glove, except for the logo. The logo, they need to change that logo. A few people have mentioned that. I also will correct myself from the original video. This is Cabretta leather. This is not a synthetic leather glove. And I found this to be very durable. Really like the quality for $5 a glove, Cabretta leather. You got some air holes here, a little bit of breathability. It's really solid. They've held up very well. This is my second glove of the season so far and uh, very, very happy with that. All right, now they call this the number one hole in the course, but I don't think it's quite that difficult. A good drive, as long as we are not too far left on the fairway, where there's a tree to block our approach to the green, as long as we're middle to right side of the fairway with a decent drive here, we'll be in good shape, okay? That one got up in the air just a little higher than I wanted trajectory-wise. This is a 10 and a half. I normally play like a nine and a half. So distance is a little bit down there, but again, except for that one shot on four, all the drives have been really good with this thing. Now, I got no roll here because as you can probably see, this fairway has not been mowed. And in fact, there's some really high grass here. It's been so rainy in Tampa the last few weeks. First time I've played in like three weeks, by the way. So. That'll tell you just how good these clubs are. For one thing, I've got 145. We're going to go eight iron. Let's get this thing close. Good shot. Good shot. We just caught the fringe, but again, look at the distance control. This is as pin high as it comes. I'm going to call it 18 feet, and uh, we're moving a little right to left. Oh. We got through the hardest holes there at even par, and that is a huge win on this course. Heading to seven, which is a straightaway par four. Then we've got an easy par three and a nice finishing hole in a par five. Let's see if we can get back to even, guys. I think we've got a chance. Real good news here, guys. The tee boxes are up, so we've got 364 to the middle of the green straight away. As long as I hit any kind of decent drive, we should have a lower iron in our hands. Let's do it. We're one yard off the fairway here, unfortunately. I've got about a 135 shot, which is great. I can carry that bunker with no problem with a little extra club. Let's see if we can get close. See the club. All right, guys, we held the green pretty well there. We've got 15 feet coming back. We're just a little long there, which is fine. I didn't want to be short. Let's see if we can get this thing to drop. Hey, we're still in really good shape. Now we've got the easiest par three. I've never had a hole in one. Could today be the day? Let's see. We've got about 135. We're gonna go nine iron here. We've gotta go right over the water, over the bunker. Hopefully one hopping in. Looks good. Oh, it's not a hole in one, but that was a great shot. Let's make a putt. All right, guys, we've got our best chance at birdie that we've had all day. We've got about 12 feet. This is very makeable. Yes. <laughs> we are even par with the ultimate Costco set, and we are heading to nine, our last hole. Guys, I was getting worried there about the KS1 putter because I've been telling you how good it is, and we hadn't made one all day, but we made one there when it counted. Heading to nine. We've got a par five. The last shot will be over water. Probably can't get there in two. I'll take a par there, it would be nice, but if we can knock that third shot in tight, we'll be in great shape. Uh oh. So when I was standing up there on the 9 tee, I thought to myself, I've got a chance today with the ultimate Costco set to actually have the lowest round that we've had on this channel all year, even par or better. We had even par last year. We haven't had even par on a nine yet this year with any clubs, and this was my chance. And I yoinked the drive. Luckily, I got a decent break here, I think. Yep. And uh, we'll be able to get out of this pretty easily. But now it's gonna be a choice. There's my ball. How aggressive do I wanna be? Because we can play this as a four shot hole into the green. We've got this island green. 
where I can try to get aggressive and get as close as I can and make it three shots into the green. If I was taking the easy route, I would go out to the right here with a little bit of a hook. The more aggressive line is up a little bit faster into the middle of these trees <laughs> and hopefully we'll split the uprights. But this is where we talked about earlier, sometimes you gotta minimize mistakes, but when you've got an opportunity to do something special, you've gotta take a risk. That's life advice as much as golf advice, okay guys? I'm gonna take a risk here because we have a chance to do something special, be even par or better. Let's see if it pays off. It didn't pay off. <laughs> I hit the tree, it came backwards. Now we've got to bear down, somehow make a five. Mental toughness. Oh, I've got a terrible lie now too. Here's what I'm faced with. I've got to get it, I've got to advance it about 165 along the right side is ideal to get the best angle at this left pin, left side of the green, okay? So five hybrid would normally be the play here, except I don't know if I can go down and get it, so I've got to hit six iron, I think. Run. <laughs> you can see it barely got off the ground. That was a very tough lie, but we've got a chance to get up and down for par. Let's do it, guys. All right, another decision here. We've got 115 to the flag. As you can see, I've got water in the front and left and behind. We can take the easy route, assure ourselves of the under here, which we had set at plus two, and be at like plus one if we take a bogey here. Or we can be heroes and go for it. You probably guessed by now, based on the last shot, what I'm gonna choose here. We're going right at it. All right guys, we've got a putt at it. It's a long putt but it's a chance at our best round of the year. All right, if we can do it, these clubs may just have to stay in my bag a little longer than I had planned. We've got probably, I don't know, 25 to 30 feet coming downhill, but let's see if we can make this KS1 talk one last time. Guys, we did it. Even par, best round of the year. Unbelievable. I think I just made everyone look within a mile radius because I am so overjoyed. KS1, it took a while to warm up, but we got this thing working, guys. Oh my God, that feels good. Oh my God. The ultimate Costco set, what'd you think, guys? Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think of this thing. I think I'm gonna leave it in my bag at least one more round. The only downsides, if there are any, the fact that it's a little harder to work the ball, but it's just so forgiving. So you're sacrificing that workability for a little bit of forgiveness, but oh boy, is it good, guys. Oh boy, is it good. Hope you enjoyed this one. You gotta subscribe after that, guys. I'll catch you back here real soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.